Hey everybody, this is uh, Brian Jenkins from Run Sign Up. So this video has a little bit of a, a lag before we know for sure everything is uh, working correctly. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a pause before I get started just to confirm that everyone can uh, hear us. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get started. I have Allison here with me. If you want to wave, Allison, there she is. <laughs> so Allison's going to be helping me out with, there's like many different monitors here <laughs> and uh, lots of places for people to give us questions. And so she's here to make sure that I don't look like an idiot. Yeah. Um, so job. <laughs> it's, it's, there's so many buttons here. I don't really understand what's going on. So I appreciate you guys' patience. And uh, can we just confirm that the audio is working good? All right, we got Jeff. Jeff is saying loud and clear. Awesome. Great. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. And so today what we're going to talk about is uh, viral social marketing. And the concept behind this is um, somewhat um, back to basics uh, because sometimes the basics are the best way to approach um, uh, problems, which many races are expressing to us. Hey, do you have ideas or concepts that could help us out with marketing? And if we go back to the beginning of like why races started, it was a it was health um, and uh, competition and things like that. And and now um, racing has become a lot more inclusive. And so we start looking at the different reasons why people might want to come to your race. And we put at the center because we we just firmly believe that friends and family are are key reasons why uh, people come to the race. Now there's all these other reasons that people tend to come. And we all can check different one of these boxes, but again, at the center is always gonna be um, friends and family. And so part of this process when you're looking at, when you uh, evaluating your race or series of races is, who's your audience? Um, and make a list of your built-in audiences. So if you're a non nonprofit, you wanna look at um, donors, people who have liked your Facebook page, past participants, uh, local running groups, uh, parks, um, do people talk about your swag? We work with some races that really have some very unique and interesting swag and people talk about that. So making sure that you understand what your audience and what your hook is, um, is a good starting point when you're starting to develop what I would call a marketing plan. And so the, the next thing is, is that, so you've kind of defined um, why people want to run your race and what's your audience. And so what you're going to look at then is how do you get people talking about your race? So, um, when you're, when you're getting people to talk about your race, uh, the number one thing that people talk to me about is uh, just Facebook. And uh, almost every conversation ends, starts with Facebook and ends with email. And those are two good pieces, um, but there's other pieces that I think aren't being as utilized as much. Um, so number one is, of course, everyone understands that a website is an important component of uh, a race marketing uh, strategy, but a lot of people don't check their website on their phone. Um, one of the things that I'm learning a lot about um, personally is um, video. So I spent a lot of time on my own um, learning about uh, uh, YouTube. And uh, I think YouTube for some races could be a, a tremendous tool for content marketing. And what I mean by content marketing is just the ability to communicate with um, your participants in a different manner and uh, actually building your own audience just because you're kind of a thought leader. And I'm sure many of us have listened to podcasts or watched YouTube videos from um, like non-commercial streams and you know, became fans of those people. And I think races or groups of races could potentially do that. And then on the flip side, um, I've seen quite a bit of drop in, in, in participation on physical goods. So this is one way, if you're not comfortable with digital marketing, you can um, differentiate yourself. So what you can do is, is go to local running stores, um, local gyms. Uh, the other one that's really been interesting and I've learned a little bit about this is um, checking out all the different calendars that you have. Um, so that's not just running calendars, that's family um, and community calendars uh, where people are looking for things to do. So make sure that you can market yourself as something if, if your race is appropriate for that, um, where anyone could come with their family and participate um, they're not just looking on running calendars. They're looking at, um, my daughter this past weekend went into the local art center and participated in a little pottery. Um, that was found through a little community newspaper calendar. So um, these different strategies are getting missed by a lot of races, but they're, they're fairly easy to do. They're typically low to no cost. And um, it's something you can meaningfully do and see progress on. So I mentioned a little earlier 
Um, we've talked a little bit about this marketing plan. So this is kind of defining that marketing plan. So again, we've talked about um, our audience. We've talked about um, you know how do you get people talking about your race. And we've also talked about um, where we might want to do that. Um, the only one I want to add to this, since I've kind of talked a little bit about this before, is um, Google AdWords. Um, so if you're a nonprofit, um, Google has a fantastic grant program that you can apply for. And um, Google may have up to um, $10,000 worth of grants that uh, can be uh, given to local nonprofits um, to support advertising um, for a nonprofit. And then you're going in and buying um, Google AdWords for people who are searching for um, your keywords that you're advertising on. And again, going back to um, the physical marketing, one of the things that I wanted to mention is if you didn't know this, this is a relatively new service, I think a year or two old, um, from MailChimp, which is a very um, great email sender, which is a competitor to Constant Contact with many of you are very familiar with. And MailChimp has an option now if you um, sync your data uh, with them, they have the ability to generate postcards. Um, so if you have a, an, an event you want to get to people, um, mail is actually becoming quite underutilized. And um, you know most of us are getting packages from you know eBay or, or Amazon or different services like that. And so putting a little postcard in the mail about your race or series of races could be a way to get yourself um, differentiated from the sea of digital ads and emails that your participants are potentially seeing. So um, w we want to talk about the your digital and, and physical marketing plan gets people talking about your race. So that's one component to it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift to the idea that we're getting people to start signing up for our race. And I have this concept I call the reverse funnel. So many of us are very familiar with um, the marketing funnel or a sales funnel, which is, um, it's literally a triangle and we're feeding people into the triangle. And what we're gonna talk about now is that on the other end, so we've got 100 people we put in the funnel and 10 people come out and actually sign up for it. Well, how do we get those 10 people to then refeed the top of the funnel? So that's what we're gonna talk about now with these viral marketing strategies. So to kind of put a point to this is um, when we're talking about Facebook, there's two ways to look at Facebook. One is I need to put ads there because there's a ton of um, impressions or eyeballs um, that could potentially see this. The other is, is that, and we all know this, is that Facebook is an opportunity for a friend or family to share and ask you to come participate in it. And so you need to ask yourself the question, would you come to a race exclusively because you saw a Facebook ad, or would you come to a race because your friend asked you to join them? Well, the answer is for the majority of us is that our friends would ask us to come join them and we'd like to do that with them because it'd be a lot more fun. So we've got these five key terms. Um, that we want to define on how we can um, start focusing our, our viral social marketing. So we've got teams, um, which is a very common concept. We've got referrals, drip campaigns, swag, and a cause or um, a nonprofit. So teams, this is a concept that uh, when I started about 10 years ago was probably the number one viral social um, marketing concept. And so we're all relatively familiar with this. So to add technology onto the idea of teams, the, the, the biggest growth type of teams are typically gonna be social teams. Um, so social teams would be friends and family who um, register together and there may be some sort of compelling, um, competitive element to it in terms of like largest team. So what we did on this slide and we've defined some different ideas um, is you can automatically discount or refund anyone that hits a, a, a team size that is a certain size. Um, have a competition for the largest um, team, having a competition for the largest team fundraiser, or also then having costume um, competitions, team shirts, team names, et cetera. And then one of the other things is making sure that you define, um, if you get X number of members or more, um, the Scott Coffee race, which uh, Allison has attended before, is 20 or more, right? You get a free, yeah, you yeah. Get free slots. So 20 or more, so that's another idea, and it's a great way to work with a sponsor. So if a sponsor, um, wants to uh, engage the, the local community is say, if you get 20 or more members, um, you can get a free pair of socks. So here at Run Sign Up, we provide you with all those different mechanisms to automate the technical side of this, meaning you can set up teams, you can have a team list, the largest team sizes, um, and then you, your responsibility is to define how you're going to uh, incentivize this. My preference 
is um, I really do like the idea of a team threshold, so 10 or 15 or 20 or more, and then everybody gets something, and then also having the largest team competition. So um, Trish Portuis, uh, we, who is one of our customers, she shared with us, uh, and I think the race was this past weekend, um, which is the, uh, the rump shaker that she works with. Um, they have an option where um, if you hit the five member uh, mark, the original four members will get $5 refunded back to them, and then everybody after that gets a $5 discount. So again, this is a hybrid between technology and viral marketing. Um, so they're, they're, everybody knows this um, about this race. It's a very big team race. And so they're kind of offering that monetary incentive, but they're putting a block on it. So you can't just say you're gonna get five members. The, the kickoff actually happens once that fifth member registers. Um, so we also have uh, the Vermont City Marathon that we work with, and they have a wonderful team program. They have um, various different uh, team distances to complete the marathon. And um, this is a great way, if you are a longer distance race, to break that up and potentially go after companies or running groups um, to get them introduced to a longer distance race that might be intimidating to them. So the next one is referrals. And we've put a, a lot of technology behind this and we've got it down to pretty well uh, a science of how we want or would recommend, I guess is a better way to put it, uh, someone to be able to use uh, friends and family to target, uh, to become ambassadors, so to speak, um, uh, for the race. So what we found is that, uh, number one, you don't have to have a code. We don't recommend you know requiring someone to use a code. We just generate a unique URL for every single participant, and then they share that by email, socially, um, to their friends and family. And then you offer incentives. So incentives could be monetary. They could be gear, such as a branded winter cap. Um, or you know have like higher tier ones where you get um, VIP experience or VIP offerings or even competitions where you know hey if you refer the most people no different than an age group winner you're offered um, a reward for the top three referrers which is a difficult word to say um, and they uh, they then become not just the competitive athletes are getting rewarded these um, ambassadors are being rewarded as well and you should bring them up in front of your um, in front of all your participants to, re to recognize them, their contribution to your race. So some very simple um, tips and tricks um, that we recommend is um, we have social sharing options and this is literally what they're sharing when they um, share socially your race. You can customize the image, which is super important because that's their first impression. Um, you can also use our registration follow-up emails. So in our system, we have these um, drip campaigns. We're gonna talk all about those a little bit here in a second. And the drip campaign is basically an email that uh, goes out at intervals that you set and you can remind them about the referral program that you're offering and how it works and what the incentives are because most of the people are either gonna take action right as they register or not at all. So these follow-up emails are kind of reminders on how to, to participate in this referral program. So here's some really staggering stats to share with you. Um, and these are repeatable, meaning we've seen this with other customers, but this particular customer shared this with us and allowed this uh, to be put out publicly, is that Race Day Events, which is a large event management company based out of Wisconsin, um, they had 11.6% of their registrations come from the referral program. So it, it's hard to define, and I'm not sure whether it's worth um, kind of digging further into this, whether or not these 11.6% registrations would have come to the race one way or the other, that question could be asked for any promotion. Um, the point is, is that it could be measured and, and we could attribute it directly to that, which likely means that more registrations came to uh, this race than what was tracked because there's breakage in the URLs and things like that. Um, so Sourfish Events, which is another large event management company based out of uh, uh, the Illinois area, they had 8,000 registrations and only had 344 refunds. And the message that I want to share on this is that the number one concerns that we get from uh, race directors is like, hey, this referral program is going to going to burn all my money. Well, all mark all marketing costs money, and half of marketing we can't measure what works or doesn't work. So we need to make sure um, that we are rewarding the people that are actually out there, you know, promoting your race. So. Um, I, I get that concern on every single um, conversation I have. It's like, oh, I'm just going to give away all the money. Well, if, if you put the right stops in place, such as like you have to refer at least three people or at least five, it's not easy to, um, to hit these levels without 
uh, you know, really actually promoting it. You're not going to get three people on accident. They're going to have to kind of continually promote that URL. So drip campaigns. Um, so these are automated emails that can be configured with inside of um, the Run Signup system and also even Mailchimp. Mailchimp has a fantastic. Um, uh, I think they did they call those journeys. Yeah. Okay. So they and they call it journeys, and that's I've seen that in other systems. And so what we can do is allow you to go in and turn on different drip campaigns. And the three most common that we recommend are incomplete registration. So that's the people that start registering but don't finish. Um, price increases, which is all what we use to try to get people to register because otherwise they'll just procrastinate. And then registration follow-up emails. So I've talked to you a little bit about registration follow-up emails for referrals. You can also use that for teams. Um, and even um, you can use that for fundraising. So there's examples here of um, how you can use drip campaigns. So we can talk about your referral link. We also can, we didn't talk about this much yet, but we can also talk about fundraising and getting people to, um, don't forget to share your fundraising link with friends and family. And I think one of the things we recommend around setting up a drip campaign is really focus on one thing. Like don't try to cram too many things in there. Don't try to cram referral rewards and teams and fundraising and everything into a drip campaign. Really focus on a message and try to hammer that home in um, your follow-up emails. Good point. So this is an example. Um, if we were to visualize uh, a journey, um, so we're taking them through um, uh, various different journeys of these drip emails. Um, so sometimes when you're thinking about uh, how you're going to be communicating with people, drawing this on a piece of paper um, and, and like thinking of it as a timeline can be helpful in imagining what kind of emails and at what interval are you going to be um, communicating with those participants or potential participants. So um, one of the things that's important uh, that we can potentially help you with and other email systems can do as well is making sure that you're not necessarily always hitting the existing um, participants. So what that means is that you need to filter the list and there's a variety of different ways to filter the list and this is part of what we're building in our CRM system is um, being able to target specific participants. So for example, and I like to use this example because it's, it's, it's fairly um, uh, it's a, it's a good example is basically I'm doing a promotion for my race and I want to exclude um, people who have already registered but then I want to do a Mother's Day promotion so I want to target um, uh, you know maybe uh, females between uh, 20 and 60 for my walk and encourage them like hey bring your mom to the race and kind of do something like that and so I'm not hitting my existing participants and I'm kind of doing a very targeted Mother's Day promotion. Mm -hmm. And Aaron and Race Day events, um, they've had a lot of success specifically targeting last year's runners who haven't signed up for this year's race. So they'll use the free email marketing and run sign up to reach out to them. And they'll also go into um, the Facebook custom audience reports and export that list of past participants who haven't signed up yet and then target their Facebook ads. Um, that lets them make sure that their Facebook ad money is going to like a very good place and strategic because they're going to probably get a lot more signups targeting a known audience um, rather than just some random audience that they put together on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the other things that you can do is um, you can cross promote if you have multiple races on run sign up. Um, you have the ability to uh, use uh, the run sign up email system to cross promote your races. You can share lists and things like that. Um, so that's probably a fairly common practice for a lot of uh, multi race uh, users. Is the, you know that you want to really target. Um, you know if your race is applicable to multiple uh, that same participant base, make sure you're promoting most of your races. We also have a multi race registration tool where someone can sign up for multiple races at the same time. So swag. Um, so swag is uh, a different term would be merchandise or giveaways or sometimes t-shirts. Um, we have seen tremendous um, creativity. I would say um, race directors strength in general is their creativity um, in swag. Um, so seeing all sorts of cool t-shirt designs or hats, um, I, you know, socks even. There's basically, you know, making sure that what you're doing is something you would want to wear and you want your participants to wear and then using that as a promotional um, tool. So I have um, some races that, you know, they have awesome medals or um, they have a really unique poster or something like that. And so doing a marketing campaign um, with, a, with a visual element to it, this is where swag becomes um, your, your biggest friend. 
Um, we also have a bunch of people now expanding our referral program to either incorporate, hey, you get $15 credited back on your credit card plus this unique swag. Um, and, and we've seen higher response rates um, where referral programs are utilizing cash and gear. Um, and that gear should not be something that someone could purchase um, from the race, it should be unique. Um, one of the other things that I would recommend when you're looking at swag and swag rewards is look at your sponsor base and see if any of your sponsors have gear that you could um, utilize to promote to participants. So um, if, if you're, one of your sponsors is a t-shirt, um, your t-shirt manufacturer, come to them and say, what is the coolest thing for 2019 that, you're, that we've never used that we can offer as a unique offering to our participants? And then what you can do is say, hey, you know, sponsor, if you give this to us, which they shouldn't have to give too many, um, because there's not going to be a ton of people that are going to hit these um, reward levels. These are kind of your elite uh, ambassadors. That you can then include them in these follow-up drip campaigns to highlight that sponsor as the um, the title sponsor of the swag rewards. Um, so the sponsor is getting an added value, and it may even be something in the future that you could sell to them. And on top of that, they are they actually supply the gear. So this is one of my uh, my favorite slides. Um, these posters were actually sent to us by the Race to Roby Creek, um, and they do a unique poster every year. And so this is a great example of, of physical goods um, and unique to this race. You can see each one of these is different in its own way. And uh, this is a great way to, when you're doing physical promotion, uh, to differentiate yourself. Like imagine going to Panera and seeing uh, the blue period. I mean, it's just, it's funny. It's interesting and it's engaging, and there's just not enough people that are utilizing this type of um, uh, marketing. And Race to Ruby Creek's been around for decades, and it's a sellout race. Um, and one of the cool things that they do to make it such a unique experience is the theme that you see on the poster. It corresponds to everything that they do in their race each year. So the way that they start the race, the, the food, the drinks that they offer at the after party, like everything they do wraps around that theme. Um, so you can get really creative with, you know, having unique swag and extending it past the physical good to just how you execute your whole race. Yeah, so the, the next one is um, uh, 3W Races um, out of Colorado. And um, one of the, the, they're one of the kind of pioneers of just trying different ideas. And one of the things that they ended up rolling out, because they have quite a number of races that they produce and also third party races, meaning races that they don't own but they assist with, was they created a team of ambassadors. And so ambassadors were generally enthusiastic local um, runners or participants who would just go to local running groups and um, they would, 3W would then supply them with stickers or extra t-shirts or hats, anything extra they might have along with potential free entries or discounted entries. And so, you know, this ambassador would come do the group run, which might have 10, 30, 50, 100 people, depending on the day and the weather, et cetera. And they were constantly getting their name out there by like each run, they were just kind of giving away this gear. And it's a fantastic um, grassroots program. Some of the other um, concepts that you have um, is uh, photos. So within the run sign up system, we do have a photo um, hosting system. So you can uh, load all the photos into run sign up at no cost. And we have a bot, um, which is uh, obstacle, uh, I can't, OCR. Yeah. I um, can't remember what the CR stands for. Um, and so what happens is, is that these photos are, uh, get loaded into the system, we host them, and then we attempt to try to tag the photos looking for the bib numbers. So the quality of the, po the photos, the bib numbers themselves, et cetera, et cetera, can cause you know, great tagging or suboptimal tagging. But the main thing is, is that participants can get their photos for free and then encouraging participants to um, grab those photos and, um, and share them. But the most important thing is giving them away for free. Um, and that's been a big yeah. change. And Adventure Enablers, they have amazing like professional photography and like drone videos and it looks great. Um, but one of the things that they also do is they have volunteers that they just put at the finish line and they have them take a picture of everyone and then they can upload those photos on race day so that when people go to check the results, they see photos of themselves right away, and they're kind of encouraged to share that on Facebook um, and kind of gets your name out there um, even after the race is done. Exactly. 
So, um, and this one is about cause or nonprofits. Um, many of our races um, are nonprofits, uh, so it's not a surprise that uh, I'm sure if you're a for-profit race, at some point in the past several years, you've gotten an email from a potential participant or existing participant to say, what, what is this race supporting? Um, and so you wanna make sure that you have an answer for that. Even for-profit races typically have charity partners. Um, the biggest thing that I take away from um, having charity partners is making sure um, we've got it highlighted in green, a mutually beneficial relationship. So that means sitting down and talking to your charity partner about what kind of marketing channels do they potentially have that you could utilize um, to kind of collaborate together to get more people um, registering for the race and also more people potentially donating or becoming, becoming fundraisers depending on the situation. And so, um, you, then working with that charity partner to potentially do swag rewards for fundraising or donations and things like that. Um, and this is a, a great uh, way to engage participants. So simply put, um, the re our pitch to why nonprofits like us is save time, raise money, and it's e raise more, and it's easy. <laughs> yeah. And we have a lot of nonprofit technology, and you can see from our recent blog posts, we are expanding that very quickly. Um, but basically, the reason that Run Sign Up is great for nonprofit races or races that have a charity partner or multiple charity partners um, is we have a seamless, integrated donation um, and fundraising platform in the registration path. So a lot of races that previously used a split solution where they had registration on one platform and then fundraising on another, they lost a lot of people because people don't want to create another login. They don't want to have to go make another transaction. Um, so keeping it all in one is great. We have low processing fee. We have automated ways to incentivize fundraisers. Um, so just like how Brian was talking about um, referral programs, um, we also have automated fundraising rewards. So when fundraisers hit a certain goal, you can give them back their registration fee. Um, we have you know, different ways that you can incentivize. Um, and yeah, I think we, we really like working with nonprofits. We learn a lot from them. And over the years, we've really gotten to build out our donation and fundraising technology on our platform. Yeah, so the most important thing to bring it back to viral marketing for, um, for races is that uh, a good nonprofit partner um, and being able to announce potentially a new nonprofit partner or a strategic alliance with a nonprofit partner if you're a for-profit race um, is, can really boost your race. Um, so, you know, we see one of the most interesting things that I see um, is the, uh, we work with some mutt struts. Um, and they're typically with some sort of animal shelter programs. And the, you know, if, if you partner with groups like that, um, there's a, a large number of people who have you know, pets and they want to support races that support um, pets and shelters that can help animals out. So that, that's an example of like, you know, finding a good partner like that could really boost your attendance and interest in your race um, from a viral aspect. It's not necessarily like I bought ads or something like that. Um, so many of the, the uh, races that come to us and they bring their nonprofit partner over with them um, are, are sharing with us that they're seeing an increase in donations. And primarily that kind of goes back to Allison's point about integrated fundraising and donation and registration path. And again, that's a viral piece is that, you know, someone's starting to make donations um, while they're registering because it's an integrated process, that's great. And then if they're also sharing with their friends and family about the race um, and they feel passionately because you feel passionately about the cause, um, that could either attract more donations or more participants. Yeah, and I think this brings it back to the mutually beneficial relationship, like giving your nonprofit partners um, like a great platform that's going to increase their fundraising, um, the amount of donations they're getting, and the number of donor contacts that they're getting um, from participating and partnering up with your race. Um, it's really valuable. So we, um, we also work with uh, Fusion Racing, and if you haven't checked out their website, it might be cool to check it out. Um, they have a, um, a running chair program um, for people who are physically unable to participate in races. And uh, I believe Steve, I think he times or does some work for them. He's uh, pushed many of their athletes, including through the Philly Marathon, which the Philly Marathon is pretty hilly, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so it's really inspiring and really impressive. They have these custom chairs for each athlete. Um, so they've been able to um, encourage people to participate in their races. 
And then where, the, where this like really cool loop happens is that someone registers for the race, um, they come to the race, they get to see Steve or someone else pushing the athlete in one of these custom chairs. And so it's not intangible anymore. It's very tangible and it makes you feel better about coming to the race, better about donating and fundraising and then telling your friends about it because you're like, look, this guy, this race was super cool. It, you know, um, was, was, uh, it was a super difficult race and they came through and did the race. The athlete was smiling the whole time. Steve was smiling the whole time. Eric wants us to know that Philly isn't hilly. Oh. So that concludes our presentation, um, and we wanted to open up the opportunity to uh, let people ask questions. Um, I, I hope that this was helpful for everyone, and again, there's a little bit of a delay, so we'll um, wait a little bit of time uh, to see when questions start coming in. And Brian Ag let me know that OCR means optical character recognition, so thanks for letting <laughs> me know that. So do you see any questions in there? I think I see questions. Um, so this will be available if you didn't tune it into the live stream. Um, you'll be able to watch it on Race Directors Hub. Um, I'll also post a link to our marketing page. Um, you can download our marketing guide, watch the webinar um, that we did uh, through Run Sign Ups webinar series um, about a month ago. And you can also request a demo if you'd like to learn more about Run Sign Up's marketing features for races. And lots of people say thank you very much, Brian. Um, so we have a question. Are medals valuable as far as swag is concerned in promoting the race? Yeah, so um, medals are definitely valuable um it's kind of a uh, a flashpoint discussion for some people so people like myself who've been running for a long time many of the races that we participated when we first started running um, medals were were held for the top three or the top five or whomever mm -hmm. and that has changed quite a bit um because the sport has grown exponentially uh that you know many people expect medals uh, my my opinion on medals is that uh if you're going to do medals do them right, um, so and and make it a big deal. Um, David Hutnick, I saw him pointing out on here. He was he was on there. Um, they have a really fun series called the Big Ass Metal Series, <laughs> and they they embrace these medals are gigantic. If you've never seen them, they are enormous, and that's one of their hooks. And they embrace it and they promote it. So um, if you're going to do medals, um, don't go with the smallest, cheapest one. You know, go with something unique and theme related. Um. So we have been experimenting with allowing multiple influencers, charity schools to fundraise via their own unique code. We give them money per registrant signed up with the code. Opinions? Um, so uh, I, I've, I've had some races that have used coupon codes unique to charities. Um, my opinion on that is that it's okay. Um, I, I actually think that y using a unique URL to track a gym or a charity or something like that is great. I'm not sure that you, giving a discount out is necessary because basically you go to the charity partner and say, hey, if you get $30 entries, we'll give you $5 or $10 instead of, it's hard for the race then to say, okay, we'll give $5 off plus we'll give them $5. Well, I think if I was a, a donor, I'd be like, hey, well, if I sign up for this race, which I was kind of thinking about anyways, and, and $8 goes to charity or $10 goes to charity, I'd like that better. Um, what about cross-promoting with other races? Any tips for making it effective? So when you're cross-promoting um, other races, uh, the most effective cross-promotion of, of other races is uh, if you've got like a season, a spring season of races, a summer season of races, or a fall season of races, our multi-race registration tool or anyone's multi-race registration tool that has it is going to be one of your most effective ways to do it. Um, the other is, is um, series points. Um, so it's not always about like where did you finish you could offer incentives for how you finish but also just finishing the race and then saying if you finish three races and you could track that we have a tool mm -hmm. for series points that is super effective and and you can actually publicize that so people can see like if you don't get at least you know and you could do points by distance of race or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and the Bellin series does that. So they do their points so that the top, I don't know, 250 finishers for men and women each get like uh, more points. And then every finisher receives a set number of points. 
Um, so people are getting points just for participating. And so if you participate in all eight races in the series, you may end up with more points than the top runners who have just come out to one or two of the races. Um, and then they also give out points for volunteers, so people that help out at their races, um, which is another way to get more people involved and reward them. Um, is there a way to export and just email previous year's participants that haven't registered yet? Yeah, so there is an ability to export um, previous participants who haven't registered yet. Um, the integrated tool um, within Run Sign Up's email tool will give you the ability to exclude um, or include certain groups. Um, so you definitely can do that within within the system. And if not, you can export that out of um, our system and then you know plug that into MailChimp, Constant Contact, or whatever your email tool is. Cool. Um, so Brian's asking, um, one of the problems that you hear from races is the cost for an entire family to run in the race. What advice can I give to a race that wants to make it easier for a mom and dad to bring the entire family? For example, a family of five is often over $100. Um, I would say like multi-person sign-up pricing can be really effective. So it's different than team pricing. Um, so like Trish offers um, refunds based on the size of a team, but families aren't necessarily seen as a team. Um, so multi-person sign-up pricing lets you offer either a discounted price or just a flat fixed fee. So you can say if five people sign up together in the same transaction, instead of you know each of those people paying $100 or $20, you can have them each pay $15 or you can just charge them a flat fee of, let's say, $60. Um, so that can make it easy for a race to, um, you know, make it even more inviting for a family to sign up. Yeah, the other thing from family pricing is we, we like encouraging age-based pricing. Um, so age-based pricing, the nice mm -hmm. thing is it just auto-calculates it. Um, one of the other things that you can do is um, offer an opt-out for t-shirts. So t-shirts are typically a pass-through cost for races. They typically cost three to seven dollars, somewhere in that range for lower cost events that families are going to typically target. Mm -hmm. And so you can offer an opt out for the t-shirt um, and that allows the adults to say, you know what, we don't really need a t-shirt, um, that'll lower our cost. Um, so David's asking, do you have any difficulty in educating event partners, especially smaller local businesses, as to the power of newer and more innovative types of marketing and promotion? Um, we find that many event partners come out to the event but don't get the ROI and don't come back because they don't leverage their partnership correctly. Yeah, so, so David's question is, is effectively how do you, you know, show value to a sponsor, like simply put. Um, and, and, and that is really hard to do, uh, but I think there's things that, that you could use out of these concepts that would work really well. Um, so we didn't talk about this, but we have the ability to generate unique URLs. Um, so you could then track different marketing activities. Um, the biggest failure that I see is lack of um, sponsor activation. This is where the large races really just, uh, they just really crush the smaller races because they can get people to come to the expo, interact with sponsors and things like that. So uh, I really like the idea of um, a sponsor powering your, your swag rewards program. And um, that will give them something to, to really like hone in on, like they're getting a dedicated email to every single participant multiple times on that. Um, and then after that, um, I've said this many times, but one of my favorite ideas is um, VIP porta potties brought to you by a sponsor mm -hmm. and they have to give your email up. Like I promise you, I will give you my real email for a VIP porta potty. Like there's no way you're not getting my yeah. email. Um. a la carte kids options for no t-shirt that will grow out of for making it more incentivizing for families to sign up together. 10% um, discounts to groups that might help too. Um, any other questions? It looks like we're, we're getting close on the end of the yeah. questions. Um, so one of the things that we'll do is uh, we did a similar presentation about uh, a little over 30 days ago. So we've got a really great um, uh, amount of information um, that we could, we've put together for you guys to share. And again, one of the most important things I want you to know is that this is not uh, run sign up specific. Um, these concepts can all be used um, in any, um, on any platform. It's just you know, the, the steps or the mechanisms might be a little bit different. People like your VIP porta potty idea. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we really appreciate you guys uh, joining us today. Uh, if you need anything else, you know, reach out to us here at Run Sign Up. Um, if you haven't checked this out, I forgot about this. Um, go to RunSignUp.com, and is the marketing page that you have? Does it have the yeah. trends in it as well? Um, no, I'll share that one as well. But we have um, a marketing landing page. We also have one for race trends. Those are two really great pages to look at for more information. On our marketing page, you're going to be able to download a marketing guide that we put together, kind of based on the information um, that we shared with you today, but in more of a checklist form for you to use um, for your races. And on our trends page, um, you'll be able to look at our most recent race trends report. Johanna did a live stream on Race Directors Hub a few weeks back, um, going through some of the main findings but I think looking at um, aggregate data can be really useful to help you figure out what are some good ideas um, to market, to grow, to fundraise more um, at my race. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, this is Brian and Allison. Thank you. And I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Bye.